it depends on that it's already kind of implying that meaning so that totally additionally to specify is not required hi good evening can you hear me yes i can hear you now yes uh, good evening ma'am how are you i'm fine how are you i'm quite well wonderful okay just give me a second you're a fitness expert i've spoken to you before right yes i am mm -hmm. hey here okay just a moment uh... So I don't have any learning plan for you today. Yes. So um, let me go ahead and start with an extempo topic for you. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, you will speak about it for like two to three minutes. Okay. Okay. Jogging versus walking. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Jogging versus walking. Okay. Which both are a uh, part of exercise. Walking is a less movement exercise, less intense exercise. Jogging is a little bit higher intensity exercise rather than jo uh, walking. But both has effect their own on people's body physiology. And both can help you to give okay, improve your blood flow, uh, burn your calorie. You can release endoline in your body. So I think both are the part of exercise. Everybody must jog, walk, crawl, move their body, but they they must move their body, right? And uh, it's a different. You feel active. You feel productive. You feel uh, lighter when you walk or jog. obviously you will feel tired if you are having long walk but uh, it it will give you self uh, self confidence you will feel better you will burn more and more calorie than you are consuming so it's a huge benefits uh, in your fitness okay so if i were to give ask you um what are the specific pros and cons depending on what age the person is okay what are the specific pros and cons of walking versus jogging the pros and cons means uh, advantages and disadvantages i think uh, both has advantages and it's all about your physical activity okay are you said uh, is your sedentary lifestyle do you have sedentary lifestyle or active lifestyle but uh, i think the disadvantages uh, don't have any disadvantages uh, yes of course if you have any medical problem in your in you then there would be a disadvantage when you are jogging or something like that but if you are fit if you are nothing wrong with your uh, physical history okay then i think both has good advantages yeah okay so what is the apt ages that you would recommend that uh, can actually opt for jogging is uh, look uh, i i have seen people who are 75 80 still they run almost 5 km 6 km every day i have seen still i see every day on the other hand i have also seen a uh, person who is 35 he cannot run a uh, 500 meter right so it's all about mindset the way you are melting your body in the course of your life so shall your body will function if you think that okay i will run too much then okay my knee will damage okay i will lose my cartilage of my knees and uh, i will get heart attack or this or that definitely it will happen with you 
if you feel like okay if i will run 1 km every day i can improve my health i can reduce my cardiovascular problem okay i can be a little bit more stronger i can improve my health then you will improve your health so it's all about mindset wonderful okay so um now there is a particular way in which you should jog to get the best out of it right uh, and also ensure that you don't hurt yourself or damage yourself in the process or don't cause unnecessary aches and pains so what are the few things that you would advise someone to keep a watch for or take care of when they are jogging or walking for that matter yes uh, they should when they are jogging or walking i think there is no problem in walking uh, until unless you are doing brisk walk okay but uh, everybody walk uh, or whether it is 1000 uh, steps or 2000 steps they walk and uh, i don't think any problem will occur while you are walking if something going to be happen then happen even you are sleeping it will it may happen <laughs> right but right. yeah if you are jogging don't start vigorous jog okay sprint or fast start with very gradually okay do it for next one week and then you can improve your speed right so gradually you can improve jogging if you are today going to, if you never been to jog okay i i what i do when any but they come to uh, for fitness training first i ask them to okay get warm up and jog for 100 meter go and give me one round and i assess them is he able to do further or not if i feel like okay in 100 meter he is taking one or two break i say that's okay that's done for the day and then i will give you another exercise right if he can do 100 meter non stop then I, after 100 meter i will stop them give them few minute breaks and again i will ask them to go 100 meter 100 meters again another 100 meters right so before giving any exercise i first i assess them i i test them how they can function how they are in physically in a physiology and uh, how their body has how much their body has a strength power flexibility mobility endurance and then gradually i you know uh, progress their exercise okay is there any particular foot pattern or body posture we should be maintaining when we are jogging to get the best out of it yes it has a huge uh, impact uh, okay uh, on your fitness when you improve your jo- uh, fit i mean posture while jogging right i i have seen people even they walk like keeping their head down and this way and their upper back is like not curving like this way mm-hmm. even if you are running like that way then you may impact more on your back you know more stress will occur on your back and your neck you, you cannot run longer if you are going like even i think some when you improve your posture just up chin up like this way 70% of your confidence improve when you walk like this way hmm and rest of the confidence will come with your knowledge or whatever and obviously if you are standing improve your uh, you know um, put put your posture like this way and there is a chemical call and uh, let me remember a stress uh, real uh, 25% stress uh, it decreases when you improve your you know posture and one more ad- there are three advantages i am forgetting right now okay no problem so, yes yeah. yeah so i think posture has huge advantage in personality okay wonderful before we continue our conversation let me go ahead and share some observation uh, with you so uh, first of all i would like to say that in terms of your uh, sentence formation the way you expressing your body language all that is 
you know, going very well. There are still a few minor mistakes that you make while you're framing your sentences. And uh, one thing we will now need to focus on is a bit of pronunciation of certain syllables, right? What is happening is uh, not that it's not understandable when you say those words, we can understand it. It's just that it, it seems like it's going in a very flat note. And that same note is followed for all the words. What happens in that is that, let me explain this first. Now in English language, unlike our other languages, the modulation and intonation plays a very critical part in expressing yourself appropriately. If you don't use that syllable stress, if you don't modulate your voice, if you don't intone, then there are a lot of words in English language which we may fail to understand just because that, you know, expression was not there in the speech or the pronunciation was not there in the speech. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if I say I saw a bear. Okay. I can't bear. Mm -hmm. If I say it in the same tone, both words are bear. They're spelled also the same way. They're pronounced also the same way. How do you make the difference? You know? So if I'm showing some discomfort and saying, I cannot bear this, then I can make the difference between which bear am I talking about? The animal bear or the feeling bear? Right? So intonation, modulation, syllable stresses, all that is very critical in this language. Only then you can leave that impact when you're expressing yourself. You know, leave that that. So the person who's listening to you will remember more of your body language and your expressions than your words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Through your body language and expression, they'll recollect what you said. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I've picked up a few words just to give you an idea of what we are talking about and how we need to work on it. I'm using the chat to put some words there. Let's try them out. Yeah. Feel. Okay, now you're saying it right. You're stressing on the double E syllable. Yeah. Right? So if I'm saying the word cool, I want to stress on that ooh sound. Oh, right? Right. Okay? So if I'm using just like one syllable, but the double syllable is in the end. Like for example, this word. Here, the I is a short sound. Mm. So I would say it as pin. Pin. Pill. I'm not Pill. stressing here. But if it's coming in between the word, I want to stress it. Okay, if I say, uh, now if I say this next word, if I don't say it right, mm -hmm. it can be mistaken for this word. Yes, yes, yes. Similarly, if I don't say this word right, it can be mistaken for this word. Yes. I think, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the sound that is double O and uh, is we have double. to stretch it, stretch it, right? Stretch it a little bit. Okay, so like feel, fool, feel. pool, oh. right? Versus pill, full, pull. Okay. Mm -hmm. That difference has to be there. Otherwise, we can mistake one word for another. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Let's try another one. Okay, tell me how would you say, say this? Okay. Step. 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 Right. So... Don't stress on any words in this particular, yeah. any alphabets on this particular word. They're all flat, very short sounds. Yeah. Step, eh, per, step. Step, step, yeah. Similarly for this one. Neck. Yes, now it's right. Neck. Neck. So you have to yeah. watch out when you're in the flow of speech because mm -hmm. it becomes neck. 
slight a sound comes in when you're saying it otherwise even for step it is like stay okay so you have to make sure it's like flat eh sound st eh p n eh k neck neck now look at some oh look at a word with the o sound see the next word posture now just because it's o o has different sounds it can be o it can be u it can be o in this one it is o pos posture 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 um if i use this word again that is a capitalist confidence see this a uh, sound right no make it a o con con confidence con confidence con yeah confidence, confidence. um how about this one close great how about this one now it will change Okay. Com. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> now it will change. Complain. Complain. Yes. Now it will become come. K. A. It will become right. But it's still a no. Okay. So you see how it's changing that sound of the o, right? Um. Confusing. If I say this one. Again, what will be the sound? Communication. Now here it won't be ka, it will be ka. Communication. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. These are few of the words with the O sound. Yeah. So we need to basically, like, you know, one thing is good. You're not uh, mispronouncing the A sound that much. Okay. You're using the A sound properly. But the O and the e eh, which is the e sound and the double syllables these are the ones where the maximum flat notes are happening okay, okay. so you should try to look up tongue twisters which have double syllables which have the co combination words okay so those okay. tongue twisters will help you pra practice the change in the sound for those particular kind of words Now I have a uh, sentence here. Ideally, I wouldn't say it is wrong, but we could make it better by replacing the the way. Okay, should I repeat again? Repeat it. Read it. Yes, read it. The way you are maintaining your body is totally depend depends on a dad. It totally depends on that. Mm. Okay. Now, if you are using the sentence the same way, then there is no real need to use the word totally. Okay. Okay, because the sentence itself is telling me that complete maintenance of your body. Yeah. It depends on that. It's already kind of implying that meaning so that mm. totally additionally to specify is not required. Okay, okay. okay. Or mm. I could change this whole sentence in the other way around. So I'll use the latter part of the sentence first. It totally depends on how you are maintaining your body. Or it totally depends on the way you are maintaining your body. So all I'm doing is picking this up and putting it in the front and then saying the rest. Okay, if you're using the word totally. Okay, okay, good. Okay. okay, this one we have to work on the verb going. Mm. If something so we are using verb, preposition, verb, and mm. then verb again. 
Mm-hmm. So there are like four, uh, three verbs and a preposition together. So we need to fix that. If something going to be happen, it will happen. Going to be happen. Going means it is going to happen. To be also means it will happen. And happen also means it will happen. Mm-hmm. Right? The action that is going to take place is that something is going to happen. Mm-hmm. In all the three. Mm-hmm. So we don't need, actually we don't need to add going and to be. We mm-hmm. can simply say if something mm-hmm. has to happen, it will happen. Something has to happen, okay. Got it? Mm-hmm. Has to. Something happen. has to happen. It will happen. Mm-hmm. If you're using going, then this is how your sentence will change. If something is going to happen, B will not be there. If something, something is going to happen, it will happen. happen. It will happen. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. So these were the few observations that I had. Do you have any specific questions for me? We still do have some time. Uh, okay. How do you pronounce B or D Y? Body or body? Body. 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 In A also, there are you two, all the vowels that we have, right? A, E, I, O, U. They distinctly have two sounds. Short sound, long sound. Okay. Okay. So, um, in alphabet A, sometimes you will see an additional one odd sound, which doesn't come under the vowel sounds, but it is there. Those are exceptions. Okay, so in English language, most of the things have rules, but those things that don't have rules, we have to just remember it is like that. All right, so if I'm talking about A, for example, two sounds, short sound is A. Mm -hmm. Long sound is A. Okay. Okay, like for example, if I'm saying apple, so I'm using the A sound. If I'm saying... uh, Annoy, I'm using the er sound. If I'm saying um, aeroplane, aeroplane, so that a sound is coming in, right? So that's how the sound is changing. Now in this sound changing also, there are rules. How do you know when the sound change? That's what my next question was. (laughs) (laughs) So most of the time, if the vowel alphabet a for example is followed by a consonant sound so everything other than the owl uh, the vowel sounds is a consonant right so for example apple right so a and then p p is a consonant that's not a vowel so i'm using a if i say the word ant a n n is a consonant a ant right um if i'm using aeroplane Either, either I can write it as A-I-R, airplane, or A-E, aeroplane. Both words are correct. It's just British, American, English, it changes. Okay. So in American, they say airplane. In British, they say aeroplane. We follow aeroplane. But both ways, if you notice, after A, there is a vowel. Yeah. Right? That's where I'm changing my sound. So I'm seeing the vowel after A, and that will tell me that this one is A sound. If it's consonant after A, it's a short okay. sound. A. Short sound. Okay. Nice, nice. Now I understand. Right? Hmm. Similarly for C, sometimes we say sir, sometimes we say ker. Mm-hmm. How do I know when to read ker? Why don't why don't I say kaikal? Why do I say cycle? Mm-hmm. And why don't I say sat instead of cat? Mm-hmm. You know? But how do I identify the difference? So in that the rule is. If C is followed by I, E, mm. or Y, mm. you read it as sir. Okay. For the rest, you read it as ker. Okay. okay. If so the if C I... is followed by I, E, Y, then it will be ker. Any one of them, yeah, any one. So if I say cylinder, there's C, Y, so sir. 
okay cinderella c i cinderella sir okay um ceiling c e sir but if i say uh, caterpillar c a it becomes k right collar c o close c l all these places i'm using k only where it is followed by i e or y any one of these three you make it as sir okay can you note it down please <laughs> it's very important lesson okay i never know it i e y right yes Okay. Same thing for G. Okay. G O A T becomes girl, goat. Mm hmm. Right. But mm -hmm. G Y M becomes Jim, Jer. Okay. Same rule. If G is followed by I E O Y, mm hmm, it becomes Jer sound. Mm hmm. Okay. For all the rest, it will become a girl sound. So, like for example, gypsy, Jim, ginger, all these are followed by I, E, or Y. Then you have your goat, gun, ghost. Okay. God. There it becomes a girl sound. Right? Like this, there are a lot of rules for a lot of different words that we read. So how can we find these things in uh, grammar? Can we? How can? We, where can can we find it? You can go to Google and look for pronunciation rules. Okay. Okay. If you look for pronunciation rules, it will show you a whole list of websites which have that information in. Okay. 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 okay I will. Go. 